Round four of the ANZ Championship got underway in Adelaide with the Thunderbirds up against the inform West Coast Fever. The late game on Sunday saw the mighty Manawatu host the Central Pulse and Southern Steel, with both sides looking for their second win of the season. The Tactics and Northern Mystics got Monday night netball underway in Christchurch, while in Sydney, the New South Wales Swifts hosted the undefeated Queensland Firebirds. The Melbourne Vixens and Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic had the bye, but let's check out all the action from Round 4. The West Coast Fever entered their Round 4 clash with the Thunderbirds riding high after consecutive wins, while the Adelaide locals were looking to back up their first ever win on Kiwi soil in Round 3 over the Steel. The Thunderbirds made a lightning start to the match, stunning the Fever in the opening 15 minutes, led by Carla Borrego in a suffocating full-court defensive effort. The locals took the first quarter 17-9, setting the tone for the match. Fever rang the changes at quarter time, but they had little impact as the Thunderbirds continued to dominate, led by some outstanding work by Renee Hallinan, who helped her side to an 11-goal lead at the long break. It was a decisive 20-12 third quarter that put the result beyond doubt for the home side as they outclassed the Fever, taking a 54-35 three-quarter time advantage. The Fever made further changes for the final quarter, but there was no let-up by the Thunderbirds, who won all four quarters and the match, 72-46, their third of the season. We've finally gotten together and said that this is our fourth year in the season. We should have really good chemistry, and we're just going to keep up the talk and keep motivating each other, being strong and just going out there and doing our best to deliver for the team. The Central Pulse hosted the Southern Steel in Palmerston North and were looking for back-to-back -back victories. It was a high-scoring opening stanza, with both attacking ends dominating. All four shooters on court finished the term not having missed a single shot. The Steel turned up the defensive pressure in the second quarter, with Rachel Rasmussen and Sulu Tony Fitzpatrick containing the dynamic pulse attack end. After the long break, the Steel dominated, pushing out to an early 40-33 lead over the home side. But the introduction of Jolene Henry for her first run in 2013 helped the Pulse to pile on the defensive pressure. The Pulse went on a 13-3 run to close out the third quarter, taking a 46-43 advantage at the final change. The Steel were gallant in the final quarter, and despite closing the margin on a couple of occasions, the Pulse held on to record back-to-back -back wins 59-56. We're used to having those tough games, those close games, and the Steel not so much. So, yeah, and it was just amazing um, teamwork in that fourth quarter, and yeah, it was great to see. The Tactics hosted the Mystics in Christchurch, with both sides looking for their first win of the 2013 season. The home side got the jump early on the back of some great defensive pressure and 15 goals from as many shots from English international Joe Harton. The Tactics took the opening period 20-13 and looked every bit capable of taking down their most fancied opposition. It was a high-scoring second quarter, with both sides slotting 17 goals, giving the Tactics a 37-30 half-time advantage. The Mystics came storming Storming back in the third, thanks to perfect shooting from Catherine Latu and Maria Tutaia, netting all 22 shots for the quarter. The Mystics led 52 to 49 at the final break and looked to be in control. It was the visitors who held sway for most of the fourth quarter, but the tactics charged back in the closing stages to level the match. Then they had a chance to win the match. So the ANZ Championship experienced its first extra time in 2013 and it was the Mystics who took a narrow one goal advantage after the first seven minutes. The tactics were never far behind the Mystics and the sides could not be split after the second seven minutes of extra time, forcing the match to be decided by the first side to get a two goal advantage. It was the home side of the tactics that scored the first two goals in extended extra time to claim an epic 80 to 78 victory. Yeah, a long time coming. Extra time and the next time after that, so yeah, really, really happy. The New South Wales Swifts hosted the Queensland Firebirds in round four with the undefeated Queenslanders taking on their first Aussie opposition of the season. The Swifts made a great start to the match with Susan Prattley solid under the post and Sonia McLoma disruptive in defence. The home side held a 16 to 14 quarter time advantage and looked like causing an upset over the informed Firebirds. The visitors fought to the lead in the second quarter, but the Swifts regained the momentum to lead by two goals at the half 
largely due to the inspirational work of co-captain Kimberly Green. The Firebirds asserted their authority in the third quarter, with Laura Geitz unstoppable in defence, and with 18 from 19 in attack, the visitors took the quarter 18 to 11. The Swifts were gallant in the final quarter, but the Firebirds continued their march, netting all 15 shots at goal to take the match 61 to 53. We knew it was going to be a really tough game, and we just had to stick it out. And obviously, having Ramelda down there, you know, we're a team that can score really quickly, but. We, um, we really want to focus on winning the ball this year in the defence end and not just stopping it and I think we're doing a pretty good job at that as well. So, so proud and happy with where we're at at this stage. So that ends a busy round of action with the Queensland Firebirds and Melbourne Vixens still undefeated and the Tactics recording their first win of the season.